Welcome to November to Remember on Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the Human Centipede full sequence. 100% medically inaccurate. Written and directed by Tom Six, starring Lawrence R. Harvey and Ashlyn Yenny, Human Centipede 2 full sequence is about a man, Martin, who works as a garage attendant. He has an obsession with the first movie and keeps a sort of scrapbook as more or less an homage to it. And he eventually decides he wants to get his own centipede together, except with 12 pieces. Now, what do we like? I really liked Lawrence R. Harvey in this movie. I think he did a fantastic job portraying like a creepy loner, just kind of figuring things out. He, he has an end goal, as fucked up as it is. It's interesting to see how he kind of builds towards that goal. He just really captured the essence of this loner perfectly. As with the first Human Centipede, this one's production value and the cinematography is second to none. It's fantastic. It is gritty. It's just got a really just dirty feeling to it. He knows how to create atmosphere, Tom Six. You've got atmosphere up the ass. Up 11 asses or 12 asses. It is interesting that it's black and white. I believe that this was not a stylistic choice, but rather it was too bloody that it had to be black and white to be released. Once the human centipede gets into full swing, it, it gets pretty graphic and... You don't want color. You don't need <laughs> color. It was nice to see Ashlyn Yenny make an appearance in this movie as she plays the star from the first centipede. I was surprised to see her back for this one. I would have thought that she would have wrote the series off. But she got to play like the head of the centipede, so it's a little promotion for her. Well, a few people complained about the first one saying that it wasn't as visually gruesome and gory as was originally maybe teased at. The second one is absolutely a filthy, disgusting, gore-filled movie. It's like the director said, okay, you wanted it really gory? Well, okay, here we go. And it's disgusting. Everything is shown. The snapping of tendons in the legs, just the incisions and everything, it is disgusting. Very realistic prosthetics, but disgusting all the same. The practical effects were great, and they kind of needed to be because of the uproar from the first movie. And so the masses got what they wanted. And now they complain that it was too far. You can't please some people. <laughs> yeah, I know. So now what didn't we like? I think my biggest gripe with this movie was the fact that we've kind of seen a lot of this stuff before. There's only so much you can do by attaching people to other people. Lengthening the chain doesn't make it any more cool, other than it gives you more people to kill off. It, it seemed less of a, a sequel and more of like a Human Centipede 1.5. While I thought they, the meta of the movie was an interesting choice, I just can't help but feeling it was like the director, writer, patting himself on the back. Look at this movie that I've made and now I'm gonna make a movie about how it influences people. It just seems a little too self-congratulatory. I made this movie and now I'm gonna make a movie about a guy who's so obsessed with this movie that he commits these acts. I, is he trying to say that his movies can do that? Do horror movies make violent people? I don't understand what he's trying to do with that. I don't think they do, but that's a topic for a whole other discussion. Absolutely. Well, I did like Lawrence R. Harvey and how he handled his relationship with his mother. I feel like that whole aspect was not needed. It was kind of almost forcing it down your throat, like nobody likes this guy, not even his own mother likes him, and this is why he's doing it. And I don't think they needed to do that. I think he could have just been a lonely garage attendant, which would have made it a little more creepy because it's not particularly somebody who's an outcast, it's just a guy who's bored. It would have been another point in the favor of this movie kind of turned him into this. Yeah. Instead, it's his home life, his psychiatrist is abusing him. He's kind of already like this. I felt that the movie needed that, that we needed to know that this individual was already in this kind of a situation and this movie kind of gave him an outlet. I kind of, I liked thinking of it like that personally. For those of you that have seen The Human Centipede 2, you'll kind of know what we're getting at uh, when we say that the ending, it seemed like a cop-out. It looked like he really didn't have an idea of kind of where he wanted to go with this, so he decided, all right, let's, let's, let's pull an ending out of the grab bag and we'll put that on it. A lot of movies try and do an ending similar to this, mm -hmm. 
and almost every time it doesn't work because it pisses everybody off and makes the film feel like a waste. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Human Centipede 2 had a really cool concept with the whole meta aspect. Well, I didn't think it quite delivered on it. It was an interesting take on the human centipede. I really, really enjoyed Lawrence R. Harvey as an actor. I thought his performance was fantastic. The cinematography was great, and I really loved the practical effects and the over-the-top gore and just like the disturbing nature of this movie because it is what everybody asked for and they delivered. However, I did think it got a little draining and a little played out because it's a lot of the same stuff over and over again. But all in all, it's worth watching. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. So I'm gonna give this three syringes of laxatives out of five. The first Human Centipede film was an interesting idea. So the question that they answered with this one is what if someone tried to do it in real life? That kind of forced the whole meta thing. I wasn't a fan, as I said before. Lawrence R. Harvey, brilliant. It was, he did fantastic and not a word of dialogue in the entire movie. It was a wonderful performance and he deserves praise for it. And if you're someone who just wants the next big shock, then this is your movie. The film was all right. It had a lot of stylistic choices, the cinematography, the effects. It was all fantastic, but it was just a movie that really didn't need to be made. That being said, I'm going to give it two and a half crowbars out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film. And in the description, we have a link where you can find it if you want to pick it up on Blu-ray. There's a three pack with the complete series that just came out from Shout Factory. And if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to stay updated with our reactions, reviews, and games of What Would You Do?